Last time, we arrived in Gibraltar after five grueling days of being stuck with no wind at sea. Going where the fair winds blow, our home is where the waters flow. We'll show you what we've come to know on board while sailing wisdom. So we're now in Gibraltar. Got our courtesy flag. So I'm going to be making lazy jacks out of this three lay polyester. So you wanna use polyester because it'll keep its shape even when it's wet. So what exactly are lazy jacks? Well, as you can see, the sail comes down and it just falls off the boom and falls onto the deck and makes a big mess. Lazy jacks are lines that kind of hold the sail. So as the sail comes down, it doesn't fall off the boom. It just stays there. Now we used to have lazy jacks. They just died about 3,000 miles ago. So no, you don't need lazy jacks, but man, are they convenient. A couple key things for lazy jacks is you don't wanna have battens because if you have battens, lazy jacks are just gonna be like the bane of your existence. It needs to be a system that can be deployed and also be recovered easily. And I'm going to be making them with these little tiny antle frictionless rings. And I'm just gonna be tying bowlins for now. Once I have all the lengths worked out, then I'm gonna splice everything. Now to secure these ends, what I'm gonna be doing is back splicing them. really good to be here in Gibraltar but at the same time it's only a stopping point and mentally that just means we kind of want to get out of here as soon as possible because our next destination is Madeira and that's a whole new world for us we can't wait to see it and to get back into the Atlantic but there's a lot we have to do beforehand so right now we're going to go to Shepherds the Chandlery here and go get some Wi-Fi to upload a video for you guys. We're just doing busy work until the boat is completely 100% ready to get back into the Atlantic. going to get groceries today so we're gonna have to provision kind of bit by bit here since there's no grocery store nearby we can only take two bags at a time Today we woke up to some interesting news. Um, COVID has spread majorly to both Madeira and Cape Verde, which are our two next ports, or were. So today just turned into a very strange day. We're going to be going into town first, getting a few errands done. One of those errands is going to be cutting Herbie's hair by a professional because, oh my gosh, he tried to cut his own hair and it is so abhorrently bad. Oh. So that's a code red and needs attention immediately. And then we're gonna come back here and plan out every single possible route we could take across the Atlantic if countries turn us down. Time to fix my hair. First stop is lunch though. We're gonna go to this place called the Kaz Bar, which has come highly recommended.
right, so we're planning um, all of the routes we could possibly take across the Atlantic because right now a lot of things are up in the air because of coronavirus. So uh, if we get to all the way to Madeira and they have locked down by the time we get there... And don't let us in. Then we need a plan B, and same with Cape Verde. Um, and right now they're both looking really bad, so... And the whole issue is those are like our last two stops before you have to cross the Atlantic... And it's still hurricane season until the end of November. Right. So the first thing I'm going to mark on the map is our original route that takes us to Madeira first and then down to Cape Verde. And then we will go across to the BVI. The BVI. But it's from there, it's down, yeah. over, and then out. All right. That's route one. Yeah. So that's the, the optimal plan. Now, the other thing that comes into it all is the winds. So we have our pilot charts, that way we can see what the winds are that month. All right, so in August, we're running out here to Madeira, which is there. And the winds are all good. They're out of the northeast and north the whole time. From Madeira down to Cape Verde is 67% of the time from the northeast. September. Uh, a little less, but still out of the north. Mm -hmm. A little more days of calm. There's three days out of the month that have no wind. And then going to Cape Verde, we're still 52% and 57. So it's still okay. good there. All right, route two. Okay, so route, route two. Route two is going to Madeira. Yep. And then... Skip Cape Verde and keep on going. And October is getting to be more winds in other directions. So before October, we need to be down into that area. But the problem is, then you, if we don't stop in Cape Verde, we have to keep going, even though hurricane season is still going for another two months. So in that case, wouldn't we have to go further south? Yeah, so then we could go to Suriname. No, it'd be the same, except that instead of turning off here, we just run down. Where's Suriname? Right between Yvgiana and French Guiana. It's the one in the middle. If we can't stop in Suriname for whatever reason, uh, the Windward Islands and the Lesser Antilles. So here's the currents going. So mm -hmm. it's like to get across the equator, it's it's currents. All right, so that's October. And then ideally we do our crossing in November or December. We need to get down to this point mm -hmm. by October. Yeah. But we can't ideally in leave, September. But we can't leave this point until End of November. End of no until December. Yeah. You can't not get there. The problem is there's hurricanes before. If we get to Cape Verde and for whatever reason keep going, the hurricanes don't go all the way down to the equator. So we can simply sail across the Atlantic below the hurricanes. So we need to be below this point. Yeah. So we need to stay below that line to get across. If we can't stop in either place or decide we don't want to stay in either place any longer, we can still cross, hang out south, and then when the hurricanes end, we can then go north. And that would actually give us even more time in the Caribbean. Just going non-stop. So non-stop, Gibraltar to the BVI would take us at 80 miles a day, 60 days to do it. At this mm -hmm. path. Yeah, I plotted on Navionics. Now that's straight line, which most of this is because it's downwind. Do the things you gotta do. Today is a really exciting day because we're going to be active. We're going to do the Mediterranean Steps, which is a hike up the back of the Rock of Gibraltar. And it's supposed to be quite challenging and we're pretty out of shape, so... Enjoy watching that, and uh, here we go. It's a lot of up, and we haven't even gotten to the trail yet. <laughs>
This cave used to be sea level, and we have climbed so many steps to get up here. It's amazing to think that people used to live in this cave. They, they kind of weave seamlessly into each other uh, for stealth. <laughs> so it's, it's just really, really interesting. Pulls you into a very upsetting part of human history. So we were very tired and tried to do the cable car down and we got to the cable car and I said they just closed. Have a nice day. So we had to walk all the way uh, down the mountain. <laughs> yeah, so that little notice meant we had to walk about four kilometers, which is about uh, three miles roughly. Okay. About there. Yeah. We're able to vacuum pack our meats. So now we're gonna pack them all into the freezer. All right, this is, this is Jordan, our chef of the night. I haven't 
done anything to this wheel in eight years and the varnish is peeling off. So what's crazy right now is that we are looking at three different countries. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below. Is one of the most famous and lauded, is that a word? All right. Today is a really exciting day 